Half the class will be doing an oxidation reaction, while the other half does a reduction reaction. In organic chemistry, oxidation is described as either a loss of hydrogen atoms or an addition of oxygen or other electronegative atoms. In exchange, reduction is described as the opposite. Oxidation of alcohols provides a general method for preparing carbonyl compounds. Oxidation of primary alcohols gives aldehydes, while oxidation of secondary alcohols gives ketones. Remember, tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized without breaking the carbon-carbon bonds. For those of you doing the oxidation reaction, you will be using sodium hypochlorite as your oxidizing agent. Sodium hypochlorite is the reagent in Clorox bleach. This will oxidize your secondary alcohol, isoborneal, rapidly and in high yield. As you've seen before, we dissolved 5 grams of isoborneal in 15 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. We then added 50 milliliters of your Clorox by over the range of 5 minutes. We then cooled the flask to keep the internal temperature in the range of 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. As you can see, a white precipitate started to form. Then we allowed the mixture to stand at room temperature for 30 minutes with swirling every 3 minutes. Now we'll be doing a KI starch test. White KI starch paper will turn blue-violet for a positive test, which is what we are looking for. This represents a positive KI starch test. Now you'll be adding, adding saturated sodium bisulfate until the yellow color of the reaction mixture disappears. Sodium bisulfate quenches the excess oxidizing agent. Once the yellow color has disappeared from your mixture, another KR starch test will be negative. So that when you put the starch paper in, the paper will stay white. You might have to add a lot, of, a lot of sodium bisulfate, maybe over 100 milliliters, and maybe need to transfer your reaction mixture into a larger beaker. As you can see, the yellow reaction mixture color has completely disappeared. You will then perform another KI starch test, as said before, and as you can see, the white paper of the KI starch paper should stay white. Now you'll pour your mixture over 100 milliliters of brine, saturated sodium chloride, and ice. You want to take about 100 milliliters of brine and a fistful of ice. You will then collect the solid by filtration on a Buckner funnel and wash it with sodium bicarbonate. Now you'll be using vacuum filtration to collect your solid. You'll be washing your solid with saturated sodium bicarbonate solution until foaming is no longer evident. You want to air dry your solid for 15 minutes using high vacuum. If you have any questions regarding vacuum filtration, refer back to previous videos discussing it. Remember when watching, washing your solid with sodium bicarbonate to turn off the vacuum when pouring in the sodium bicarbonate. As you can see, it will foam.
Since the sodium bicarbonate will foam a lot, make sure you remove the water from the flask before pouring in bicarbonate. Wait until the product dries. You'll need to make sure you get all the material needed for this step. Once the product dries, you'll need to prepare 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazone, a derivative of camphor. You'll be dissolving 0.2 grams of your camphor in 5 milliliters of 95% ethanol and 10 milliliters of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine reagent solution. As you can see, we're heating the mixture on a pot plate for three minutes into its boiling point. The solution will turn deep yellow or yellow-orange. And as you can see, the yellow crystals are starting to form on the outside of the flask. Once you've heated it for three minutes, you will then cool the reaction mixture for one to two minutes on ice. If needed, you will scratch the bottom of the flask to initiate crystal formation. The crystals will be a yellowish color and usually form within a few minutes. You will then filter the yellow precipitate by suction filtration using two to three milliliters of chilled water to wash. Make sure when you're at this point that you're also chilling your water. Then you will allow your crystals to dry for five minutes on high vacuum. Once they are dry, you will find the melting point of your camphor derivative. For notes on how to, to find the melting point of your product, refer to earlier videos.